Uh, it's the Geek again. Time for another Formers Fridays. And, uh, we've got kind of a request. See, I don't... I haven't been able to listen to the recordings myself, personally, but I asked the guys, specifically, um, have there been any calls? Has anybody been leaving messages on the voicemail line? And somebody asked... Again, I didn't hear the message, but this is... So it's, like, through... From one person to another. Somebody was asking about alterations, or... I guess... It's complicated, but like, in the original, it, it was going back to the original run of Transformers. Back before it was Transformers, it called Diaclone, or Micronauts, or... <laughs> Dirt made a video on this, go watch that. <laughs> but, at one point, Transformers was two other toy lines. One of which focused on vehicles that little guys could get into, and one that focused on other stuff, like, I think Megatron was from this other line, there was uh, the little minifigures, it, it was, whatever happened, uh, to not, what is it, T Takara, picked up the rights of these different toy companies, and put them together and refocused them as Transformers, now I don't know if Japan did this first, or if Hasbro did it, and then Takara piggybacked off it, again, this is all in Dirt's video, I'll even look for it, and if I can find it, I'll put up a link and show it to you. But one of the gimmicks they used to make more characters, which translated it into the show, but it was really just a cheap gimmick of making more toys, which in the end was enjoyable because the cartoon, at least, took these different characters and gave them per different personalities, and it made you want to get these different versions. What they would do is they would repaint the same toy, a couple different colors, and wow, instead of First you've got just the one that was red and white and that was Starscream. Well, let's paint it blue and we'll call that one Thundercracker. Well, let's take this other plane and we'll paint it black and purple and we'll call that Skywarp. And they did this with a ton of different characters. And they're still doing it to this day. He-Man did this with the Faker character. And continuing in this tradition, we are going to take a look at four figures from the Transformers Universe Collection. Or Transformers Classics. I can never remember what they're calling them nowadays. But we've got a repaint of a Bumblebee figure. It's not the original Bumblebee figure that came out of this line. We we got Cliff Jumper, and then we've also got Starscream and Thundercracker. Now these are two different examples of what I'm talking about, so we're gonna just jump in and take a look. Okay guys, so now we've got two examples, like I said. We've got Cliff Jumper and Bumblebee. And I feel like one of these is actually from the Reveal the Shield run of figures, which I liked because basically the whole gimmick of that was a gimmick they used way back in the day, was with this little sticker decal. Now, way back in the original toy line, and I wish they never stopped doing this, what, what it is, it's a kind of thermal sticker, which is, it's a symbol outline, but you don't know what side you're on. So what you do is you put your thumb or your finger or any hot device on it and get it kind of warm. And you can see, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but you can see pretty clearly what side they're actually on. Now, it's shaped like the Autobot, but the Decepticon logo will fit in there too, so... And I don't have any Decepticons that have that right now. So we just got Bumblebee showing that off, and my Cliff Jumper figure has that too. But, we're just looking at these guys in vehicle mode right now, and as you can see, we got Bumblebee. And this is the second repaint they did. Uh, it's basically the exact same figure, except he's a different shade of yellow. This one's more of a gold. And he's got the black stripe. And this is to coincide with his comic book persona at the time. I wish I could have grabbed the first release, but he was super expensive at the time, and I was just happy to get a Bumblebee that looked pretty close enough to actual Bumblebee. Now, Bumblebee has this too, but I'm having trouble getting it on, so... Oh, oh and Cliff Jumper decided to lose it too. Both of these figures came with this little jet ski that would clip on as a jetpack, and I'm going to show you guys that when we get into robot mode. But, I love these figures. They're so cute and entertaining and they're pretty easy to transform and the same can be said of these figures which are the two jets of Thundercracker and Starscream now I'm just happy to have all these guys pieces to be honest with you but they transform much 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 easier than their Gen 1 counterparts but in Gen 1 and in these these guys might not have been the same 
They were slightly different, but for the most part, they looked almost exactly the same. I'm pretty sure the Gen 1 va variations were different sculpts. But these guys are not. They're, paint, they're just different paint jobs. These guys were the exact same toy when they first came out. They were just different repaints. But they work pretty well. I should point out that Thundercracker and Starscream have these side guns that will shoot missiles. If I can get them to work. Oh, there we go. I don't know if you guys saw that, so let's try it again. There we go. And, uh, you can see right here they have wheels on their backs which fold in. It's kind of a nice little hint where they kind of hide the wheels as part of the transformation. But that's them in vehicle mode. Now let's take a look at robot mode. Okay guys, here's uh, Starscream and Thundercracker. Now, I'm really, really happy with how these figures had turned out. They feel very, very reminiscent of the old G1 figures and still feel much more solid, much more complex yet easy to transform. Their, uh, their missiles are very reminiscent of the old school figures. And obviously, you can put them on their hands, you can put them on their wings or their arms. And they just felt like a perfect transition from the original G1 figures. And I just, I can't say enough how much I love how these figures turned out. I really don't know why people would keep buying the same characters over and over again once they find the perfect version. Now, Starscream is older, so his joints are a little loose, but... There. Yeah, there we go. Kinda. God darn it. There. But yeah, I just can't get over how much I love these figures. Now, if you can tell, the wheels from vehicle mode are, or not the wings, but the wheels from vehicle mode are hidden in their chest, and it just looks right. It fits what the character looks like, and I just love how these figures are. Now, granted, the head doesn't turn like it could, but once in a while you have to understand their limitations because of the transformation, and I can deal with that with these figures. Now, there's only one problem I have with Bumblebee and Cliffjumper's figures. They did not come with a weapon. But here's Cliffjumper. It's kind of shorter than the Jets, but that's okay. Still another amazing transformation. There. Put his head back down. And he's got that shield chest plate thing too. Now, what you don't see in Cliffjumper because I transformed him to be a little different than Bumblebee, let's get these guys out of the way, is he is not sporting the ski boat slash jetpack. And I thought I would do that just so you can get an idea of what it looks like with and without. So that's him without one, and here's Bumblebee with his jetpack. Now, it's kind of loose fitting, but it's okay, it still works for like display or playing with ideas, and it really makes them look cool. I really can't get enough over these older, the first line or two of the, the generation figures. But yeah, the one problem I have with Jumper and Bumblebee is that they did not come with a weapon. And I don't know if that should bother me or not, because I don't remember if the original toys came with a weapon or not. I don't think they did. But when you remember the character in the cartoons and the comics and all that stuff, he always had a, at least a little hand blaster. And it would have been nice to have seen a weapon on him. But it's helpful to remind me that, for one, he did come, they did, both did come with an awesome little accessory. And it kind of helps enforce the feeling like these characters don't need to have weapons to be cool. Uh, Bumblebee and Cliffjumper are two of my favorite put together figures ever and they never had a weapon on them which and a lot of these weapons are interchangeable anyway say if you wanted to give one of these guys a gun take one from uh, Wheeljack or, or or the Optimus, figure, Optimus Prime figure that came in this wave or whatever and it should be fine but that's the two bugs and the two jets that I have they did make another jet they made a couple other jets actually but the one that would fit Bumblebee and 
Thundercracker, they made a Skywarp jet, but the only way I'm aware of that you could have gotten him was in a two-pack with Ultra Magnus, which was just a white repaint of the Optimus Prime that came out. And I did not have the 50 bucks to spend just to get a repainted Skywarp. I didn't care about that Ultra Magnus. The only Ultra Magnus that's coming out right now that I care about is either the Combiner Wars one or the Masterpiece one. But, well, that's the repainted figures. You can see him. I don't know. And, well, that's that. But, hey, um... If you liked this episode, or if you hated it, which I would understand either way, uh, let us know. Don't forget to go to popculturenetwork.com where you can check out more toy reviews, uh, stuff about comic books, video games, whatever that we might have there on the site. Which many of are much better than this one, I promise you. Uh, you can also go to jointheforums.com, the official forums of the Pop Culture Network. You can talk to all the other great people there uh, about neat stuff just like this. Oh, and you can check out my show if you're interested in something besides Transformers at the geek reviews the geeks the show is the geeks obscure reviews again i can never remember what the damn youtube page is called you can also find me personally on twitter if you want to go to at pcn underscore dirt you want to ask me some questions you got a follow-up you got something else you want to see reviewed on the show make sure you let me know there you can also call our 24-hour voicemail line area code 217-953-4025 that number is burned into my brain i'm never going to forget it make sure you call and leave us a voicemail message so take a look at all that and i hope you enjoyed this episode and i hope you enjoy past episodes and future episodes and until next time this is the geek for the pop culture network saying good journey <laughs>